Hello everybody, I'm Hubert Border, and I thought I'd have my large cup of tea, but you can't see that it's large because my hands are gigantic. Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of our Nice Creative Flow. Hit subscribe and thumbs up if you like the past lessons that we've been doing. Again, we're here in Ewan's backyard. Thank you again, Ewan. I've got my Ray-Bans on. I've got my cool camera set up, which I'll share with you later to capture a wide and a close shot of this tutorial. Got my Ray-Bans on, as I once said, because you need Ray-Bans, especially on sunny days. In this Arnice Basics video, we're going to cover Heaven, kind of the second Cinewally pattern that most people learn. It's a double stick pattern, and Cinewally means to weave, so your hands are tying and untying, tying and tying. I'll do this with Ewan, and we're gonna break it down into three and then three. Heaven is a six count, or heaven six. Goes by a number of different names. So heaven six, six count, or heaven. Heaven also representing all the tips of your stick are pointed up. Now when I say up, and if I do heaven with Ewan right now before we get into the actual lesson, I don't mean up as in my sticks are way up here. Heaven, okay, because the point or the tip of our sticks should be pointed at the target we're gonna aim for. If I was to do heaven on you in, as an application, I wouldn't apply necessarily heaven this way. You wanna think, well, where would the tips be hitting? What would I be hitting you in with? Even if I did heaven on his elbow or his arm, my tip is still pointed at his elbow. I'm not hitting with the middle of my stick and my tip hitting his shoulder. I'm hitting with the tip of my my stick aiming for his elbow. So when I'm doing heaven with a partner or solo, I would be aiming for something around my nose level, or if I'm doing it with a partner that's a little shorter, I'll adjust and we'll keep our tips somewhere in the middle that are happy for both of us. But ideally you want it around nose level. Together we'll do it so you get an idea of how this functions. So we're gonna chamber both sticks like nunchucks on our right side. And we're just gonna start with a three count. So our first strike will be, let's call it a forehand strike. And our tips right now are a little off. We want them to be somewhere in there. Now we're going to do a backhand. This hand will go to our left shoulder and our right hand will come out and also meet in the middle. It will replace exactly where our first strike went. And then we do like a scissor or a parallel scissor transition in the middle here. So then that, sh that stick, your second strike will come back to your shoulder and your third strike will now come out and strike as a backhand, replacing your second strike. Blah, blah, blah. We chamber on our right side. Our first strike comes out as a forehand, and then we do a backhand, replacing that first strike, bringing it to our shoulder, our left shoulder. And then we do a scissor transition in there, keeping the tips up, replacing our right hand for our left hand on our shoulder. Okay, and then after you've done that third strike, that now chambers on your left side. So now you're in the Filipino nunchuck position on your left side. Okay, so once again, we go to the right side and we go a forehand, a backhand, and then another backhand scissor transition in the middle. After you've done that backhand strike, you replace it with your left shoulder. Okay, one more time. So we go forehand, backhand, backhand. Now, will your tips always be perfect? Not necessarily because we're human beings and we're not perfect, that's what makes us awesome. So the thing here is to get as close to there as possible and when you're doing this drill to understand what the tips function would be in actual application. Our focus right now is to go tip to tip, somewhere in that range. Not tip to middle, not tip close to the hand and vice versa, okay? We wanna be tip to tip. So let's add the next three strikes so we get it up to six. So we go one, forehand, two, backhand, three, backhand, chamber on the left side. Now we do the same thing on the left side. So we go forehand, backhand, and then backhand. Chamber on your right side. Now we're back at the beginning. So again, one forehand, two backhand, and this part is always tricky for most people because they don't understand how they get that stick out and the other stick back because they always think they're gonna clash sticks on that transition. So what you're doing is, after you've gone one, two, and you're gonna do that third strike, your stick is changing position and transitioning parallel to each other like this. As that strike comes out, and then after it's done this hit, it chambers under your left side. Okay, so you go one, two, three, chamber, and then we go four, five, and six, chamber. And again, we go angle one, Number two, strike number three, 
bring that tip down a little bit, and then strike number four, number five, and number six, chamber. And I'm giving you two ways to kind of identify the strike. So I'm giving you the numbers, and I'm also giving you the forehand, the backhand. Forehand, backhand. So pay attention to which one is a forehand, and which one would be a backhand, and the scissor transition in between those strikes, and then where you chamber. Okay, those are some important points there. So we use the tip, we do a forehand, backhand, backhand, chamber. Forehand, backhand, backhand, chamber. So now we're gonna go a little faster so you can see the rhythm. And the idea of these drills is to keep a consistent tempo. It's not to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's not to be broken. It's to try and keep a steady tempo, okay? So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We go a little bit faster. Okay, we go a little faster. And we're not using power. We're just using control, speed, and technique, right? Do, do, do. Just like that. And this is, this is still moderately slow, but it gives you an idea of how to see it, right? <laughs> right? Moderate is slow, and you want to chamber those sticks all the way back. Never forget to chamber your sticks all the way back. See how my sticks are basically slapping my back? You don't want to, thank you. You want to always stick to the technique. Chamber those sticks all the way back. As we start to go faster, what happens is that technique suffers, or the art suffers. And then you start to get sloppy in technique, and it becomes this. So we start off slow. We got nice, clean chamber sticks all the way back. Great technique, low stances, right? Using the tip. Now we're gonna go faster. But this is what happens. To go fast, people start getting, and their hands stay in front, and they start to, everything gets tense, and the power starts to increase, right? That's what you don't wanna do. You wanna stay as relaxed as possible in your shoulders and your arms. Your grip is somewhat tight because you have to hold the stick, and you wanna chamber those sticks all the way back through the whole Heaven Six pattern, or any Sinaloli pattern, or any technique for that matter. You wanna go through the full range of motion. I'm squeezing you and out of the frame. Yeah. Now we'll label it as the numbers, so you know that it's six count. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Slow it down, one, two, slower even, three, four. I think I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now another quick note is, you don't always have to start on your right side. You can start on your left side. So we start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Forehand, backhand, backhand. Forehand, backhand, backhand. Forehand, backhand, backhand. Now we go a little faster. So you see that? And we go faster. That's it. And time. So there you have it for this lesson of heaven. This is one of the second Sinawali pattern that a lot of people learn in Filipino martial art. It's very applicable. If you check out one of my previous videos on how to apply doubly bust stone or heaven sick, you'll see how you apply these techniques we're showing it to you in a pattern, in a drill. Patterns are great for becoming good on both hands, learning the technique, applying the art. The art is key to the technique. Without the art, technique gets sloppy, and then you get lost, and you can't apply it as effectively or efficiently when you actually go to use it. Awesome lesson. Hope you guys got something out of this. There are a million and one Sinawali patterns. This is just the beginning. Thanks again, Ewan, for having me here again. I always love training here because it looks like an oasis. I'm Hubert Border. Hit subscribe if you like this lesson. See you on the next video. Ewan, take us out. Ah!